Hey guys, this is a sort of, sort of an update video for this guitar here. <clears throat> and right now it has two bare knuckle Stockholm P90s in it, and they're humbucker sized. Basically, I love this pickup, but short version, it just doesn't seem to really work as well as it did in some other guitars. I'm pretty much assuming it's because of this neck, which is a very different neck to any of the other guitars I had. It's a Wenge neck with an ebony fretboard, and it's kind of bringing out a lot of like the higher frequencies and maybe even even some more mids um, than like some of the other guitars that I had it in. Like it, it sounds completely different from how it sounded in like my my Sunburst Jazzmaster when I had it in there, and then the couple strats before that. So, I am going to be replacing this with a Bare Knuckle War Pig, and it's the Alnico 5 version. And I figure I'd kind of just show you how I go about changing up pickups, and after that I'm going to try and help you figure out how to order pickups and how to get the right pickup for the right situation. So, basically... This is going to be a long video, so I'm going to try and break it down as easy as I can, and hopefully it's not too confusing. So I'm going to show you how it sounds now, and, and just just so I uh, mentioned, the neck pickup is going to stay. I'm not changing that out. It sounds good. Um, but this pickup, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I'm, I don't plan on selling it. Um, I might sell it to maybe a friend or something, but it, you know that remains to be seen. And it's not something I just get rid of just to make money. So um, <clears throat> we'll see. Uh, I'm sure I'll find a guitar to put this in eventually. But for now, let me show you how it sounds. Um, and just so you know, I do not have my noise suppressor on, and I do not have this shielded like at all. And uh, I do have some shielding tape on the way. I just don't have anything right now, so this is how it sounds. <laughs> to the next part yeah okay so took off the strings and I undid the pick guard and basically what you're gonna want to do is right now I have these pickups since they're p90s they are a very specific type of wiring and when you're doing pickup swaps you're gonna notice a lot of different styles of wiring maybe not in a lot of different styles but you're gonna run into some different styles and so for this example these are basically just called two conductor wiring where it has a middle section which is just the main power for the pickup or the main line for the pickup and then there's the braided outside which I'll show you close up in a second and a lot of humbuckers have two options where you can get this same style wiring to make it very simple or you can get what's called four conductor wiring and what that does is that lets you go and do coil splits and other different sort of wiring options like that but since I knew I was just going to be doing a direct swap in this, I just ordered the standard two, uh, two conductor wiring. And it's, it's definitely uh, the more simpler one, I'd say, just because you don't have to worry about four different color codes and figuring that all out. But I'll, I'll talk more about the color coding later. So I'm gonna show you real close up what I did the first time around. So you can see this is my bridge pickup here. And all this is doing here is that's just uh, a reconnect because uh, originally the pickup was the pickup wire was cut short. So just think of that as just part of this. It's just uh, wrapped, so it's not going to conduct anywhere. 
and here is my main connection from the middle going to uh, the right side of the toggle switch. It's kind of hard to see, but you know, take my word for it. You can kind of see how the middle, the middle one is uh, basically the main power, which is just going to the volume spot of the volume pot. And the outside of this braided wire is actually getting connected in here under this uh, heat shrink tubing that I put on there. And that is just going to a uh, just a normal like ground wire and that's going just grounding to the back of the pot here. So all I really have to do with my new pickup is put it in here and basically just unravel a little bit of this... Uh, this outside wire, uh, yeah, the outside uh, shielding there. Um, basically, you're gonna want to get it, um, you know, kind of tease it out a little bit so you have enough to connect to this extra ground wire here, and so it can go and connect to the back of the pot, and then just enough to, you know, go right to the toggle switch there. And that's really all I have to do. And like I said, there are a lot of different uh, styles of wiring and pickups and everything like that so i'm going to go through after and show you if you had a different sort of situation obviously i can't really right now uh do like an actual video of it because i don't have anything to really show you but everything's basically going to be as as easy as that i mean well as easy as that if you're just doing like a just a direct swap because things can definitely get a lot more complicated but I kind of knew what, what I was getting into since I had already done the wiring on this before, so I made it as easy as I possibly could. So, right now, all I have to do is with my soldering iron, just kind of uh, touch right here and make sure I'm not really like getting any of the other wiring or anything like that. I just uh, set it to, or I just set it right up against the, uh, the far right lug there, which is where my pickup is connected. And... Uh, like I said, make sure I'm not really touching anything else. It should be good and hot. And just get that so it comes out nice and easy. And then what I'm going to do is just do the same thing and disconnect from over here. Now, what I did before is kind of wrap those two together and ground them both at the same time to that pot. So I'm probably going to have to just, you know, cut the... Uh... Yeah, I'll probably end up just cutting this wire here just really close I'm not really sure yet but it doesn't really matter right now so um, yeah so let me uh, get the camera situated at a different angle and I'll, uh, I'll start it back up in a second all right so I tried to prop it up a little bit so you could see it a little easier and like I said all I gotta really do is uh, unhook this wire from here and unhook it from there too so all right, I got my soldering gun down here actually, just because I don't have a little uh, stand for it yet. I do have that. Uh, I actually don't have it on order yet, but I will soon. And I have a sponge here that's nice and wet because you're gonna wanna have something to uh, um, clean it off if you get any extra solder or anything like that. And I just got a little roll of solder here. And if you don't know what gun to use or what kind of solder to use, I definitely recommend going to stewmac.com or allparts.com. Both of those are very good with uh, just guitar parts and like luthier style, uh, you know, products, stuff like that. So, okay, let's see what I got to do here. So this is good and hot, like I said. Don't want to put my finger in there so you can't see it, but see, that came out real easy. You don't, if you're putting these in, you don't want to go and, you know, like loop it around, um, at least not crazy, because that's going to really make someone's job harder on, hard, harder on, harder later on. And all you really have to do is just make sure that's connected solidly, solidly. You don't have to make sure it's, you know, wrapped around there and then soldered, like way over soldered or anything like that, because um, that's just going to give you kind of a, it well, it it's more likely to give you a faulty connection and like I said it's just way easier to just do something really simple like that and it works just as fine so all right let's see so now I just got to disconnect here and basically all I'm gonna do is just gonna put the 
the heat up against there. And you don't want to just use like the tip of of your soldering iron. You want to use like the side of it, and that's one thing that I didn't really know early on, I'll be honest. So make making sure that you use the side a little bit more than the tip is a big help for, for me anyway. That was a huge help for me. So just gonna get that right on there. Just kind of wiggle it with my hand. Sometimes you might have to, you know, persuade it a little bit. And there you go. So now what I'm gonna have to do is, you know, kind of unravel this. Cause I kind of made it, you know, I try to make it a little pretty on there and uh, <clears throat> go a little smoother. So all I have to really do now is just kind of unravel this. These are probably gonna be soldered together. So I don't know, I might try and just un like put the solder to that and then just kind of like wiggle them apart and then get the other pickup in here and basically just do the same sort of thing. So I'm gonna shut the video off for now, um, just real quick. I am going to undo this and uh, get the pickup lined up in here and show you what to do after that. So I'll see you in a sec. All right, I just wanna show something real quick. So what I ended up doing was I just kinda got these unraveled and then these were still stuck together like this. And what I did was I just kinda put them apart like this and then I put the soldering iron right up against both of the uh, the metal parts and I just kind of pushed out that way. And then the heat plus the uh, the tension against it just kind of brought them right, uh, right apart. And so that's uh, nice and disconnected now. And I just have to remember that this is uh, the ground to the neck pickup, which I'll also have to reconnect. So um, yeah, so we're definitely on our way. All right, so here is the new pickup. Just the same style, you know, the black cover and the uh, the stainless uh, screws. And basically what I'm gonna show you, this is how long the lead wire is on this thing. It's very long. And honestly, if I left it that long, it's gonna get in the way and it could cause some unwanted feedback. So it's very important to get it situated in the pick guard and figure out exactly the length that you're gonna want and then all you really gotta do is just cut it and just cut it uh, right off. And um, you know, it's always a good idea to save that extra bit, but you don't want like all this extra wire hanging out in there. Um, I'm not really sure how long the wire was on that one, but I could just match it up with the length of the P90 pickup that I just took out and uh, I'd be pretty much good to go. But yeah, I definitely don't need all of this, but it is a good thing that bare knuckle does do this sort of thing because you never know how much you're going to need like for in my 335 for example um some of the pickups or at least one of the pickups has to uh go like around the f hole and so it's not showing in the f hole and then like all the way down to the pot and so for those sort of situations you definitely need a lot more so it's nice to have the option of having this much, but you don't always need it. And sometimes you just don't have the space in the pickup or the, uh, in the route of the body. So it's really not necessary to have all that. So I'm gonna get this in the pick guard, figure out the length that I need, and, and I'll pick the video back up right there. Okay, so I have the pickup in the pick guard now. Hopefully you can see it, I'm just gonna make sure. Yeah, and I gave a little extra length to get to here. I just wanted to make sure um, I had a little bit extra just in case I needed to wiggle something around. And so this is good to go now. But what I have to do is kind of tease out some of this uh, grounding wire. And I have this here, it's just a little sharp point on the end. Anything with a sharp point will be good, but this uh, this punch works really good. So. Basically, all you really want to do is just get in there and just kind of get a little bit out. But you're going to want to get maybe like, I don't know, half an inch down. And then just kind of, uh, what's the word? Just kind of like twist it together and just make it so it's just like a one big solid kind of thing. And then you're just going to end up soldering that whole section to another ground wire just so it can go straight to the uh, back of the pot where I took off the other one. And just where these uh, 
where this meets with uh, where the uh, shielding meets with the extra grounding wire I'm just gonna put some heat shrink around there and uh, use a lighter just kind of uh, shrink it down and then uh, it'll be good to go so you won't have to really worry about any of that All right, this is a clearly boring video, so I'm just going to shut it off right now and pick it back up in a second. All right, so now you can kind of see that I have, you know, a decent length that was kind of teased out there. And then I'm just going to, like I said, twist it together just so it's kind of one big piece. And so that, that'll that be uh, plenty enough to make a good connection to another wire uh, to make it to the back of the pot there. And here is just the main connection. And that black is just uh, just some, I, I forget what it's called, just like the outer coating there. And, but this stuff is the fabric one. It's, it's, it's similar to like the, uh, the hard plastic wiring, uh, the outer coating, just to kind of keep it uh, shielded a little extra more. And this stuff though is really cool because all you really have to do is just kind of push it back and uh, you get the exposed wire there, which is cool. So. You just want to make sure that this, uh, you know, the little cotton there or whatever it is, doesn't really make it into any of your connections. And uh, so cutting it might be a good idea or just make sure, you know, it's out of the way enough. So next, what you're going to want to do is, uh, you know, cut that extra wire. Um, I have, you're, you're pretty much going to want to use black wire the entire time. If not the entire time, but anytime you're doing like a ground connection, so if you're not, yeah, at least, well, just so you know, if anyone else opens this up later on, you know, they know what's the ground and what isn't. I mean, if they're skilled enough, they should know what's pretty much acting as a ground and what isn't. So it just, it keeps things on an even keel and you don't really have to worry about anything. So, all right. And then what you're going to want to do is what's called tinning. And basically, you're just going to want to heat this up and uh, just get some solder on there just so it makes it an easier connection when it goes to this other wire that I just cut. Um, just so it makes the connection, you know, go that quick, that much quicker and then just that much smoother. You don't want it to uh, uh, be heated too long or anything like that. And um, yeah. And you're also going to do the same thing to the wire inside here. Just get a little bit of, uh, just heat it up and give it a little bit of solder just uh, to coat it just a little bit. And then it'll just make going to uh, that toggle switch nice and smooth. So let's see. So I got my extra ground wire here and it's, I don't know, maybe like three, four inches long and I just cut, you know, just both the ends, uh, just the outer coating and uh, make sure that you uh, have stranded wire and I'm pretty sure 22 gauge or 24, um, yeah, I don't remember which one it is. I'm pretty sure it's 22 gauge that you want for, at, at, that's what you use, that's what you use mostly in, uh, guitar wiring let me see yeah 22 that's what it is so like I said you're gonna want to tin this as well all right I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, shut the video off for a second all right so I haven't I haven't tinned anything yet I figure I'll show you what I uh, what I mean when I'm doing that and uh, just kind of bear in mind it's a little difficult to try and get this all on camera and do it smoothly but 
Okay, what you're gonna wanna do is either have, you know, like a towel or leather or, you know, just something so you're not just gonna accidentally drop solder on your guitar. Right now, I'm just going over the pick guard right now. I don't really care if I get it on the back of the pick guard or anything like that, but it's still a good idea to have, you know, something extra there. So, yeah, so I just uh, dab the, uh, the wet there. Come on, come on. And I'm just going to touch it here and just start touching the solder to it. All right. Oh, yeah. That's good. Now, it's going to be a little difficult for me to get the, uh, to kind of hold this fabric back and to also, you know, hold solder and, you know, use the gun at the same time. So what I might do, actually what I'll probably do is, um, Jesus Christ. So what I'll probably do is just gather a little bit of solder on the end of this soldering gun or soldering iron and, uh, you know, just have it ready and then just, you know, just connect right to it, which is always, uh, something that you can do so all right so see i kind of got that down there i know it's not going to stay but so i'm going to have my soldering iron here just kind of add a little bit to it That wasn't too great, so yeah, I'm gonna try and just do it like this. All right, that's plenty. Well, after that, you know, just dab your uh, your wet sponge there, clean it off. All right. Now, like I said, you want to uh, do the same thing to the ground wire there, and. I don't know how to have, you know, the easiest way of doing this. But, you know, sometimes you just kind of have to hold things, you know, weird ways to try and get them to go. Or there are definitely uh, things out there that you can use. I think there's one thing called, like, helping hands, where it's just, like, moldable hands that you can just kind of have things hold things in certain ways, which is pretty cool. That side's good. Jesus. Yeah, this is not easy. All right. I'm just gonna stick this through a hole in the pit guard. Just kind of hold it there for me. That'll be a lot easier. good and this is definitely still gonna be a little hot so you gotta want to watch out <clears throat> and there should be enough solder on both of these ends to get them to connect pretty well but you know it definitely uh, wouldn't hurt to get a little extra on there at least on like maybe the end of uh, my iron here so I'm gonna do that You're just going to want to kind of like put them flush and take it away. Right. 
So as you can see, nice connection there. I mean, I don't know how easy it is to see, but those are both connected really well. And what I'm going to do, like I said, I have some heat shrink here. And it's a little bit bigger than I'd like it to be, but, you know, it should work fine. And you just need a little bit just to connect just right there. Or you could use, you know, electrical tape or something like that. But this is definitely a lot cleaner and uh, a lot easier to use. And so, like I said, just cut just, you know, a little bit, you know, just enough to overlap this one just by, I don't know, a hair, maybe an eighth of an inch or something. And then just go right up to the end there. And um, yeah, just use a lighter and just heat it up and it'll uh, shrink in size. I think it's like half the size or something. I don't know. It says it on the bag. I just have to find my lighter. All right. I don't really know if this is in frame or anything, but... That should be plenty good enough. It's definitely snug on there. If I ever need to, I can just gently cut it off. You know, it's not a big deal. With like a razor blade or something. So now, all I really have to do is... Uh -huh. all right, yeah, all I have to do is just solder this to the toggle, uh, the toggle switch there on the right side. And just solder both of these ground wires back to the back of the pot and I should be good to go. Um, so yeah, let's get that going. Now there is still some solder uh, completely covering the circular part of the toggle switch there. You can't really see it, but if you have a toggle or you know a, a five-way switch or three-way switch and you know, like a blade switch or something, um, you'll definitely see that uh, they'll have, you know, like the little circular openings. It doesn't have to go through that circular part if for some reason that you can't get it in there. As long as it's soldered to it cleanly, you'll be fine. So I could just go right up to the side to it if I really wanted to, and it would be perfectly fine. But I'm going to try not to do that. And uh, should be good to go. You don't want to have a lot of extra wire just kind of hanging out where you make that connection. So snipping the ends of it can be a good idea. Just you want to make sure that it's just up there nice and snug. And uh, this should be fine. Let me just make sure that's, you know, a little better of a connection. There's definitely uh, differences between like a good solder connection and a bad one. If it looks kind of cloudy, um, then it's really not the best kind of connection. You want to make sure that it looks shiny on there. And um, there's definitely some tutorials online uh, from a few different places showing off um, the differences between that. It's a little hard for me to kind of get that in the shot. So I'm, I'm just going to kind of... Yeah, I'm just going to suggest that you go and check out another video like that. Like, I know Stumac has some videos like that. So, I'm going to kind of twist these around like I did before, just to kind of keep things, you know, organized. Let's see. Try and twist these together. It might not be the easiest thing in the world. All right. Yeah, they're relatively uh, 
twisted there and then I'm just going to add a little extra solder to that because one of them the connection isn't too great. All right, and so I got a, got some good solder on there, and then I already have kind of a, a little ball just right on the end of, uh, right on the back of the pot there from the previous grounding. So all I really have to do, I could just put this on here and just put the, uh, the iron just straight to it, but just to make it, you know, go a little easier, I'm just gonna heat this up first, which should just take a second. Yeah. And then go right on there. Come on. Yeah. Could be a little better. So I'm just going to add a little bit extra. Oh, yeah. That's much better. And that's pretty much all I really have to do. So at this point, just have to make sure that the pick guard closes and that everything, you know, fits in there nicely. Nothing's really, uh, you know, touching against each other or anything like that. And um, basically, if you follow diagrams online or if you're just doing a very simple swap like this one and you're just following exactly how it was before as long as it's the same company of pickups like granted these are two conductor wiring um so you know two conductor wiring is two conductor wiring no matter who uh who you bought the pickups from if it's you know gibson or seymour duncan or whatever you know there's nothing going to change about that but if you do four conductor wiring there's going to be four color-coded wires and one ground wire for for all the wires inside you know the, the big wire there for the pickup and those colors are not universal so like for example bare knuckles uh wires you know they might have a green wire a red wire and you know a white one or whatever but they're not going to be the same as seymour duncan even if seymour had the same colors they're not exactly the same connection spot like one could be like the top coil one could be the bottom coil so it's very important to know um the difference between those and i'll talk about that a little bit more in a second um so yeah, that's pretty much all it takes for soldering. You know, it, it'll take a little while just to, you know, get your solder technique down. And like I said, there are some good videos online showing technique and stuff like that. So it's definitely worth checking those out. And yeah, hopefully this was informative. You know, I hope it was. And you know, this isn't the most complicated complicated of of wiring you know, diagrams or anything like that, but, you know, it definitely helps to, uh, to get in there and, you know, give it a shot. So, um, I'm going to clean this up a little bit and I'll be back with you guys in a second. Okay. So I showed you how to do the pickup swap, but I want to kind of give a little overview on knowing the right type of pickup to purchase and not necessarily um, you know, like one model over another, but just making sure that you're getting the right, um, you know, the right wiring, the right sizes and everything like that. And there's, there's definitely some good things to know. So basically I'll start off by saying for leg length and, you know, I'll, I'll show you real quick. Actually, I'll just leave that there. These parts right here where the uh excuse me where the screws are going to be connecting to those are called the legs and this is a short leg probably nine times out of ten you're gonna you can get away with using a short leg pickup but for some things you're gonna want to use a, a long leg pickup for example um like a gibson sg um the bridge pickup like sticks up a lot more than you know say like uh, a pickup out of just like a strap pick art or something like that. So I'll just leave that there actually. Um, so most of the time you're going to want, you, you're going to want to just use a short leg pickup because if your body, if the body of your guitar is not routed 
low enough, it's not going to fit. And you also have to account for the screws that are in, that are going down. Because, let me show you, I didn't close up the guitar yet. Right here, this is my Warmoth Strat body. Uh, the Fiesta Red, this is the one I've been working on. And this is what's called a universal route. So you can see those two long divots in there. And that basically lets me use long leg pickups with, you know, like longer screw heights in here. And it goes right down in there and I don't really have to worry about it. But there's a lot of guitars like normal strats or, you know, whatever else that are not routed that low. So you might either have to route lower or, you know, get a different pickup. For example, when I was building one of my strats like a year or two ago, I was going to use a Gibson pickup, but it only came in a long legged route and it didn't fit. So I just ended up going with a Seymour Duncan that I had lying around. Um, so it's definitely a good thing to watch out for. Not every pickup is going to fit every guitar. And unless you feel like routing the guitar uh, to make it fit, you know, you might have to look up some other options. You know, for example, Bare Knuckle gives you the option of doing short or long leg, which is really cool. Um, for the most part, anyway. Um, some of the stuff you don't, um, like the Juggernaut pickup, you don't need. Um, they don't give you the option for a long leg just because it's a thicker pickup anyway. Anyway, um, next thing I'll talk about is spacing. A lot of people don't understand the difference between wide spaced pickups and narrow spaced. Basically, on like a tremolo style guitar or most Fender, you know, Fender style guitars, they have what's called a wide spacing. And basically, at the bridge, the strings are spaced a little bit wider. And we're talking like two millimeters. It's almost, you know, almost nothing. But it just makes it so that the poles, the pull pieces, the screws don't line up perfectly. And um, when they're not lined up, I mean, it's it's just kind of like an eyesore for some people. But it's not really going to affect the sound of your guitar. And that's why you'll see like some guitar players angling pickups just to make those narrow uh, those narrow humbuckers or narrow strap pickups or whatever, they make it so, you know, it fits over those pole pieces. But it's really not going to make a big difference sound-wise. You know, if you, you know, if you have the best ears in the world, then maybe you can hear, like, the slightest difference. But it's it's very, very minuscule. And it's, it's more of an aesthetic thing than anything else. So... All you really have to do to try and figure out the spacing is, you know, just grab a ruler and um, see uh, how far the strings are apart at uh, right over the bridge pickup. Uh, the neck pickups are always going to be narrow space because by the time the strings start going up the neck, they're getting a little bit narrower. So you're not going to have to ever get a wide space pickup unless it's like some weird custom sort of guitar where you know they don't really narrow out so I don't know um, let's see what else uh, right I was talking about the four conductor wiring let me see if uh, actually it's my camera is actually on a Seymour Duncan pickup that I'm getting ready to use in another guitar soon um, but this is what I'll show you for uh, four conductor wiring now, it's a little hard to see um, because this is kind of heat shrunk already, but this in, inside here is a white and a red wire. This is your black wire. This is just a ground wire with a green wire because the green's kind of hidden under there. So it's four wires. But some pickup companies only offer this sort of setting anymore, and you can use that for the same sort of thing that I just did perfectly fine. Um, you just gotta have to know like what sort of things you're gonna have to do to make sure that it just operates just a normal humbucker if that's all you're doing. If you want to do like a coil tab or coil split or anything like that, then you're gonna have to get four conductor wiring. Um, but this, see how like these are connected just together 
and just kind of left off to the side. That basically is just making sure that you know you don't really need to use those right now. And actually on this one, yeah, on the Seymour Duncan pickup, as far as I can tell by looking at it, let me, let me double check because I have it written down. Yeah, the black wire is actually the live wire and the green and the uh, the bare wire are actually the grounds, which is pretty odd. But, you know, for example, for with a with a bare knuckle pickup, um, the red uh, the red wire is going to be the uh, the live wire. So that is going to be a big thing to know if you're swapping out pickups, especially between brands. Um, it's very unlikely that you're going to get a pickup brand that has changed their their stuff between um, you know two different models that you have. So if you know you're changing like a really really old Seymour Duncan with like a new Seymour Duncan or something, it should still be you know the same sort of wiring. You shouldn't run into anything that's changed or whatever from like a time difference or anything like that. Um, there are different diagrams online showing um, showing the differences between pickup companies with their uh, with their wiring so excuse me that's that's something to uh, keep in mind um, I don't really know too much else that I really have to say at this point um, but like I said there is definitely a lot to know with ordering pickups and just ordering the right pickup for example oh, another thing I forgot um, the, one of the first lessons that I learned uh, from swapping a pickup is make sure if you're just gonna keep using the same pickguard if it's something that mounts to a pickguard say like a strat if you're gonna be using that make sure if you're gonna get like a covered humbucker like the one I just used make sure the pickguard is routed for a covered humbucker so it'll be like square um, if it's rounded it's if it's more like a you know like an oval almost not exactly like an oval but if it's like rounded on the corners then it's not going to you know directly fit a covered humbucker it's gonna need to be routed which stinks so um, that's one thing that you want to make sure you don't mess up so yeah I think that's pretty much it so hopefully this helped if you have any questions at all feel free to ask I don't have the answers for everything and I'm certainly not the best uh, guitar uh, maintenance man or whatever but you know uh, doing this over and over again you definitely get a lot better and uh, yeah if, if it's your first time definitely take it slow and just make sure that um, you think things through before you know you do each thing. You don't want to do anything uh, that might cause damage to the guitar or anything like that. And it's very easy to mess up the electrical components in your guitars. So yeah, like I said, definitely check out some other videos on YouTube. With... All right, so just to kind of end this video, I figure I'll do just a little uh, run through of this pickup. Um, <clears throat> as you can see finished it's all in there all nicely uh, nice and tight um, so one thing I will mention that I did run into uh, for an issue was when I closed it all up I wasn't getting the sound and you know I knew it wasn't uh, really a soldering problem because I did everything exactly the same but what I noticed was when I kind of put everything back into place the uh, braided outside like the shielding wire um, around the pickup wire was actually touching another part of the toggle switch which completely grounded it out so if you ever end up having a problem like that definitely kind of like um, move things around make sure nothing's really touching especially something that's not uh, covered in like a uh, some sort of like heat shrink or you know like a rubber coating or plastic coating or something like that so um, anyway I don't remember what tuning I was in before I don't think I was in standard but I'm in standard now and um, same 
you know, same EQ as I was in before. I don't, I don't think I changed anything. So, uh, yeah, that's it. This is the uh, the Alnico Five Bare Knuckle War Pig. <laughs> sounds really nice um, I feel like it sounds a little more balanced than the Stockholm P90 did and for the people that have been following me for a while that have been looking for different suggestions uh, for pickups especially uh, for like a blink 182 sort of sound I have um, I have suggested this pickup before even though I'd never used it and I will say that um, it might be a little hard to kind of hear in the video. I can do a comparison if you guys want uh, to a Seymour Duncan Invader, but the thing is this pickup also comes in a ceramic magnet option, which is closer to the Invader because the Invader is a ceramic magnet pickup, which makes it a little uh, tighter. It's going to make it a little more powerful and kind of more Leans, more leans uh, to like a metal sort of thing, which I realize, you know, blink isn't really a metal thing, but it, it kind of makes bigger riffs sound heavier, a little easier. If I want to sound like a little heavier, I kind of have to really dig in there with an Alnico 5 magnet. So either way, I think this is definitely, uh, you know, a good fit. I feel like if I went with a ceramic magnet, it would have been a little uh, too much uh, high end that I didn't really want. So I think this sounds uh, really good so far. And uh, I already used it in one video. I used it in uh, that new Tom DeLonge song video. Um, so it can definitely get very powerful, but you know, it can definitely do, uh, you know, just some normal just rock and roll stuff, which is great. So compared to the uh, the Stockholm, though, I'd say this one's not as raw as I was expecting, especially compared to that. I feel like that pickup, even though the output doesn't look uh, more powerful, I feel like the Stockholm was a little more in your face. Um, so that's definitely something to consider if uh, you're kind of on the fence between these two pickups. So, um, yeah. Like I said, I know it was a very long video, and um, I hope it was... Um, Hope it was informative. I do realize that the last part of the video uh, kind of just cut and shut off because I forgot that I had been taping video for a while that night. So, uh, yeah, so sorry about that. And I don't really remember what I was talking about in that part of the video, but, you know, I'm sure I pretty much said everything I need to. And uh, if you have any questions on soldering or wiring, I can do my best to help, even though, you know, I'm not you know, an expert or anything, but I'm definitely getting better every day I do it. So thanks for watching.